Welcome to the Create Today podcast. This show is all about how you can create the life that you love one day at a time. I'm your host, Karen Stanley, and my beautiful guest, Dr. Emily Marshall, is a mother of four. She's doctor, obviously, a world champion gymnast at one point, and the founder of, most recently, Frexy Fit apparel, which is awesome. I got a sneak peek last month and I got to try them all and I've already ordered my jacket and they're incredible. So we're going to talk about all of the things. Emily, thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you for having me, Karen. This is a delight. I'm so so looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. We had to reschedule because our whole family just went through everybody got pink eye, which is nuts. I know. (laughs) Crazy. Glad everyone's okay. Back. Yeah. So if you're, yeah, if you're, Obviously, there's lots of people listening to this, but if you end up watching the video, you'll appreciate that my eyes aren't completely bloodshot and glued yeah. together. <laughs> she was like, I don't think I should be on video per se right now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just so glad everybody is well now. Thank you. Um, okay, our first super random question I was wondering, did you have your babies at home? Did you do any home births or did you have them all at the hospital? I had two at home. Wow. Yeah, the first two I had at home because I was living in Toronto, Ontario, uh-huh. Canada at the time. And so there were midwives there. Yeah. We ended up moving to Northern Alberta, Canada, which is in the boons, middle of nowhere. And there's actually no midwives here. So I ended up having my my sons, my younger two in the hospital, but the last one, I barely made it to the hospital. <laughs> I, I might have really? had them at home. Yes. <laughs> Wow. Did you, what happened? Well, now I have to tell us that story real quick. (laughs) Yeah. So my, so my first two were girls, my second two were boys, my youngest son, his name's Colson. Um, yeah, he came really fast. So we, we had to, my husband did break the speed limit on the way to the hospital and we pulled in and I just remember like jumping out of the van and like running literally down the hallway of the hospital. And this was, he's a, COVID baby. So this was like 2020. They're trying to put a mask on me. And I'm just like, what? No, I I just run down by the time I get to the, to the hospital or sorry, to the hospital room that I'm supposed to be in. I just literally dropped to my knees and he came right out. I, I caught him myself and I lift him up to my chest. I'm just like, you know, just totally, you know, overwhelmed with the emotion of having a baby And let's see. So the whole process was maybe like an hour and a half and I'm holding him. And then the doctor walks in the room and I turn, I'm like, thank you. Thank you so much. He's like, I didn't do anything. Nobody did a single thing. Wow. My mom, I I don't know if I ever told you this. I'm one of 11 children and yeah, I'm exactly in the middle. So I have five older brothers and sisters, five younger, same parents, still married 62 years. That's awesome. Yeah. Crazy. No triplets, no uh, twins. And so on her 11th birthday, they decide, I mean, her 11th child, they decided to call the hospital and just let them know they're on their way. Cause we lived, yeah, I don't know, about 20 minutes from 25 minutes from the hospital. And I hear, so I see, she comes down like so nonchalant. Well, honey, you know, it's time to go. And she's like, you know, this is like riding a bike for her. And, <laughs> and she's like, the, the spot, as soon as she hung up the phone, two seconds later, the, the phone rings and it's the hospital. They're like, Whoa, we just looked at your chart. We're going to send an ambulance. And then my sister was born in the ambulance. <laughs> she didn't oh, wow. the hospital. <laughs> oh, I know and, that's, it's just one of those things, right? Just it's amazing. Popping well, out babies. It is body, amazing. The body is so incredible. Um, and then I wanted to hear about your last competition. You were a gymnast for how many years? It must've been I, most of your life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was. I started gymnastics when I was six years old. And then I, when I was about 10, I started doing provincial level in Canada, right? Which would be state level basically okay, okay, for right. you guys. Uh, and then I ended up, so that was in artistic gymnastics, which is basically what most people think of when they think of gymnastics, like the most common one, but there's different disciplines of gymnastics. Hmm, So I, yeah. So now, you know, and so the one that I ended up 
going further in is called aerobic gymnastics. Mm. And I switched from artistic gymnastics to aerobic gymnastics when I was uh, maybe 16 years old. And I just, it took off. Like I ended up doing really well at the provincial level that year, made it to nationals, ended up getting a bronze medal at nationals. And then when I competed nationally for the next year, I got two golds. And wow. so that, yeah, so that qualifies you to go to the world level. And so I ended up competing. Well, that ended up being a five-year journey, basically through my university years. So from 17 to 22, I competed all over the world, China, Mexico, uh, France, Germany. So I ended up doing two Pan American games and two world championships. So I wasn't the world champion, but I did make it. And I ended up, I think the best I did was 23rd in the world. So most people are like, we, can we find you on YouTube? And I'm like, it's crazy. Cause I was just before the era of like everyone having phones with cameras. Like I, I remember going to world championships and taking one of those like little Kodak disposable cameras with me. Wow. And so all my VHS little mini VHSs are in my parents' basement. <laughs> Oh, you've got to send those in and get them digitized. I just did that with all my old family videos from when my son was born and he's 20 now. Yeah. And I had them all um, at one time transferred over to DVD. Well, I don't even have a DVD player now. So right. you know, who watches DVDs anymore? Nobody. Yeah. And I don't even have one. So I, I sent them into iMemories and or I'm sure they have I'm, I don't know if they, you, they, you can, you don't need to ship it from Canada. I'm sure Canada has a, an iMemories sort of business, yeah. but they will digitize all of it for you. So then, so then you can start posting them now. Yeah, I should That'd do that. So cool. You need to do that. Yeah. I'm sure yeah. you'd love watching them and your kids would love to watch them and your husband would love to watch them. And so would a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. I need to do that for sure. So, so my last one, you asked about my last yes. one. It was What's in Germany. Last? Yeah, it was in Germany, 2009 world championships. And that was my last major competition and how it shifted for me was that's when I got into chiropractic college because the doctor is for chiro doctor of chiropractic. And at the time, like it was crazy competing. We used to train, uh, in university from nine to midnight, because that's when we could get the gym time after all, like the younger kid classes, I used to go, we'd get home, me and my teammates, roommates, and of course we'd be hungry after practice. So we'd be eating food at like one in the morning and then up ready to go, like going to class at 8 a.m. It was, it was actually an insane schedule. And then I remember competing in Mexico and I had to defer one of my exams because of the timing and it was organic chemistry. So I remember in between competing I would be like studying for organic chemistry and to fly back from Mexico and like write my exam the next day. It was, it was just like an insane schedule. So when I ended up um, graduating from university from my bachelor of science degree, I decided because chiropractic is a doc doctorate and has a way more intensive course load. I was like, I can't keep up with this travel and this level of training and do my doctorate. So that's where, where the shift happened for me when I decided to stop competing. And I still continued to do gymnastics and I've always been involved. I, I coach kids still now because mm. I love it. My girls do it and all that fun stuff. So it's been a really awesome experience. How was that? What did it feel like? And you knew this was going to be your last one and you're stepping out on the floor for the last time. What did it feel like? It was tough. I actually, that year, because you're always ramping up with your competing, right? And you you do your training, you use periodization and you taper your training leading up to the competition. Like there's like a science to it, right? Being mm -hmm. an elite athlete. And that year I had finaled at Pan American Games. And in order to do have a better placing at Worlds, I needed to up my execution level, which was the difficulty level of the skills in your routine. Okay. And so- I had this one skill that was a really high difficulty level and I practice, I just practice it like a million times. And so oh, that I could have it in my routine. And, and because of it, I actually ended up injuring my hip, just the way, oh. just overtraining uh, the skill and my routines that year. So by the time I got to worlds, I was pretty injured. And so it was tough because, you know, you're kind of, 
flirting that line of pushing so hard because there's fractions of a difference between athletes of that level, but then not overdoing it on your body. So I ended up actually doing better at my first world championships because I hadn't overtrained. Mm. So unfortunately I ended up not placing as well as I did at that competition, but it was a good learning curve to be able to be like, okay, you know, listen to when do you keep pushing and when do you listen to your body? And at that point, I definitely pushed myself beyond my limit, but it was, it was still a good experience. And I think the perseverance aspect was good. Like I, I was in a ton of pain and I still competed and I still did fairly well. Right. So it's learning how to navigate all those pieces. It's a lot of mental toughness. I think that a lot, especially, um, when I watch, I don't, I don't watch sports ever, but when they have those clips of like, football players like how are any of them actually even playing still they just beat the crap out of themselves every day yeah it's incredible to me how much how yeah. much the body can take yes you get pretty beat up <laughs> you get so beat up it's like and well that's what crazy. i i think about it with health and fitness like athletes in a way yes they're at a peak level of physical fitness, but they're not necessarily fully healthy and well within their body at all times, because mm -hmm. sometimes you're pushing beyond that limit of like the health and wellness side of things. Does that make sense? Yes. And so I definitely at that time look back and be like, wow, I, even now when I train, I, I still train hard because it's like in, it's like rooted in me, but I definitely don't train as hard as I did back then. Wow. What was the skill that you practiced a million times where you hurt your hip? What was it? Yeah. So it's this skill where you, you do this, your, your hands go backwards and you pike up. It's called like a high, a high pike. Uh -huh. And you basically like snap your feet towards your head, your body folds in half. It's kind of hard to explain. And <laughs> then you pop up and you land in the splits. It just requires a lot of strength and a lot of flexibility. And you have to really whip your hip back hard to get your leg under yourself to land perfectly and split. So it was just a lot of cranking on my hip, but wow. Can't even imagine. That's incredible. I'll have to send you a video of it. I want to see that. Yeah. yeah. Get all those old movies um, digitized. You can start sharing them. That's exciting. Totally. I love but it. I think like anything, Karen is it's, it becomes dangerous when something becomes your identity. So when you said, how did you feel knowing it was your last time on the, on the floor to compete? It's a matter of at the time I had to realize that, that doing the sport of gymnastics didn't mean that all I am is a gymnast, right? I'm still me. And so it's going beyond, okay, I'm, I'm moving into the next phase or season of my life. And so I don't need to be defined only by the things that I do, but who I am and the character that I express within what I'm doing. So I think that was a big life lesson for me. And it's helped through the other transitions in my life too. Yeah. Did you have mentors or coaches that helped you through that? How did you get through that? Most, so many athletes that retire or get hurt, like we were just talking about, and they're abruptly in their career and they, they've never done anything besides that one sport. They, I hear this a lot from ex-professional athletes that, you know, really struggle. Like now what, you know, mm -hmm. did you have a plan and like, did you have help with that? Not attaching your identity to the, just being a gymnast? Yeah, that's an interesting question. I've always had really awesome mentors in my life. And so I'm thankful for my, my family is I've always had a really awesome supportive family. So that, that was a huge thing. Like my, I have two older sisters, younger mm -hmm. brothers. So my older sisters and my mom and my dad, all, all really supportive throughout the whole process of any transition in my life. And I think my siblings would say the same thing. So that in and of itself was super helpful. Uh, and then my husband, his name's Dr. John Marshall. We, at the time, at that time frame, were dating and we got engaged the year after I went to chiropractic college. So he's always been a steady, constant, the most supportive person you could find in mm -hmm. my life. So that our relationship and our deep discussions was helpful with it too. And then, 
having, I've always been, and I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, but, uh, a hyper focused person. So I will shift my focus from one thing to the next. So I was hyper focused on gymnastics, but I knew I was going into chiropractic college. So I kind of shifted that hyper focused side of me into my schooling at chiropractic college. And then by the end of chiropractic college, I actually, we had our first daughter in my internship of my last year. So then I kind of shifted to the mother focus of my life too. So I feel like I never really lost a focus. It just shifted. It's just pivoting. You learned how to pivot really well. Exactly. Yeah. Really. And then once I, once I graduated chiropractic college, the first doctor that I worked for out of chiropractic college as an associate for three years, she really became an amazing coach and mentor to me in a lot of these areas of mindset and career growth and all of that too. So it's amazing. So did you, go directly to like, did you start your practice or you start working right after you had your first child? Cause you were still oh, yeah. school, you finished your school and you just went right on to working. Yeah. So when we, of course my husband were like, Oh, we want to have a baby kind of around the time of me, gra- you know, just after graduation sort of thing, I might take some time off before I actually go into working. And so turns out we were like, all right, well, we'll, we'll just, we won't necessarily, we'll just like stop not trying. <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. And we were like, a lot of people take a while to get pregnant. So no, we were like, boom, like right away instantly. So <laughs> we were like, oh, that happened quicker than we thought. So <laughs> it wasn't after I graduated, it was during my final <laughs> internship. So I ended up, yeah, so funny, right? So, so funny. I ended up having to, not having to, sorry, I ended up having the baby, right. uh, my first daughter, Violet. I had her when I still had three months left of my inter- internship. So I remember having the conversation with my overseeing doctor and like the powers that be at the school that I go to and being like, would it be acceptable to bring my baby with me? So I don't have to not finish. So to bring her with me to the clinic, because otherwise I would have had to defer and then like go back and finish it, my internship the following year. It's kind of like, Oh man, I'm so close. I really don't want to do that. So they were very gracious. They allowed me to do that. They were like, well, as long as it's not disruptive. So me and my three closest friends at the time were so awesome. We all applied to be in the same intern group because you got grouped. And they were like, listen, M, we'll just all get in the same group. And then when you're you're with, when you're in with a patient, we'll, we'll watch Violet. And when you're, when, when we're in, you'll have her and we'll just like juggle her. So we still joke my friends back to that time because I kid you not, it was like a gift from God, blessing from the Lord that Violet never made a peep at the clinic. Most people had no idea she was there. She was like, if she was going to cry, it was after hours. Like she, it was amazing. It was like a miracle. And so no one ever knew she was there. We'd be in and out treating patients. And in the intern's room, she just get passed around. Like my, one of my friends, she'd be holding her in her arm, drinking her coffee, typing notes, like, and then she'd pass her to the yeah, it was such a cool time. So oh, I ended up- that's so cool. That's how it should be for everybody. Yeah, you totally. know, just so we bring I, babies and make it normal for everybody to help with everybody's normal, right? babies. Like, how did we get so far away from that? I know. So far. Ugh. So we yeah. ended up, I ended up graduating on time, like with my original class that I was supposed to graduate with. And then I still had to write my licensing exams, which is a huge, a huge ordeal. Oh my God. And so I ended up de- deferring one of them because of the timing of when I had her was right like the same weekend. Cause it split into three parts. So the second part was the same weekend. So I ended up deferring it and doing two parts like when, once I graduated. And so I ended up having to travel to a different city to do that. That was six hours away. And so I just remember my husband and I, we, we had no money right at that time. We ended up getting this, you could rent these residence rooms at the college for super cheap. And we, we slept together in a single bed because that's what we could afford. And we pulled the drawer, the bottom drawer. It had like a drawer that came out underneath the the single bed. And we like made a little bed for Violet slept in the drawer. She's like two and a half months old. (laughs) And then I woke up the next day and wrote my board exams. We think back to that time. We're just like, oh my goodness, we're crazy. crazy. But it all works out. It always works out. Wow. That's incredible. I had no idea any of that. That's, that's so cool. How is Violet today? Is she like drawers? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) She doesn't remember that. 
<laughs> yeah, she is 10 years old and she's, Aww. they're doing excellent. We homeschool our kids. So I have an amazing nanny who in between on my work days, she goes through their curriculum with them. And when I'm not working, I go through their curriculum with them. And that was all kind of provoked by 2020. We weren't originally planning on doing that, but through the COVID shutdowns, we started homeschooling our kids because of the clinic that we own together. You know, if one of them picked up whatever in school, then we'd have to like shut the whole clinic down. And we'd have a period of time. We had a period of time where the government shut our clinic down anyways for like eight weeks. So we didn't want to do that again. So we decided to start homeschooling and our kids really love it. So, and it like, even though it's like, okay, you can go back to school. They're, they're like, no, please. We love this. So we've kept doing homeschool Yeah, her, she and my daughter, Tessa is seven. They both love gymnastics too. So I coach their classes and mm. it's really fun. They're doing That's great. So cool. I believe the amount of home kids that are homeschooled, I, the last thing that I saw, I, I believe it was a million more kids, million more children are being homeschooled right now since before 2020. It's kind it's of fascinating. Cool. Hey, so cool. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I tried it for a couple of years, but I was single. I didn't have a husband. Mm -hmm. So I just felt like I was not working enough when I was with them. And then I wasn't schooling enough when I was working. And it was just like, right. this. I just felt I was thinking about this yesterday. I feel really, I, I, I think that me telling myself that I couldn't do it. I think that was a lie. I really right. could have done it. And I really wish I look back on that. And I'm like, man, I wish I knew now, knew, mm -hmm. knew then what I know now and everything that I have, I've learned in the last, you know, well, we're talking 15 years, you know, and you go, man, yeah. I could have done that. I, for me, like I put that limit on myself. And yes. it's like, darn, wish I would have right. known about mindset. Like I know now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's amazing to see those phases of growth though. Right. Like yeah. your, the fact that you're even aware of it now and, and, and what you do now to help so many people uh, come to these realizations is such a beautiful thing. Well, thank you for saying that. Yeah. It's true. I guess sometimes growth happens when we don't even realize it. So it's nice yeah. to actually look back and go, oh, wow. Yes. It's sometimes very small things. Yeah, it is. And it's the little things that add up. I had a mentor one time who he used to always say, most people would say, don't sweat the small stuff, mm -hmm. but he would always say, sweat the small stuff in the way of like all the little details and, you know, the little wins, they add, they add up. So don't discount them. Yes. And remember them mm -hmm. and keep track of them. You know, it's like that constant ticker. Sometimes our brain will constantly just replay all the biggest mistakes you've ever made. Right. And, but you can train yourself to change that ticker tape, you know, and you yep. like, wait a second. I, I did act more calmly in, in a, in an argument the other day. That's not a small thing. That's huge. Yeah. That's growth, yeah. you know? So huge paying growth. attention to those tiny little things that are you, our improvements is one of the keys to, yes. you know, don't you think uh, like sustaining totally. your joy and sustaining happiness? Yes. That's so, okay. It's fascinating that you brought that up because it made me think of just this past weekend, my husband and I were having this conversation, Karen, because no way. we were, yeah, we were at about like, wow, uh, we we see the growth. We see the growth mm -hmm. because we were at our friend's house. They invited us out for dinner and we actually went Christmas tree hunting. They have land. So we took the quads out and we cut down Christmas trees with the oh, family. That's it's so really cool. Fun. And so we were planning on just being there kind of for the afternoon and then coming home. But then by the time we got back in from getting trees, they were like, oh, why don't you guys just stay for dinner? We'll throw some burgers on. And we were just like, oh, okay, sure. But my husband was like, oh, I have this feeling we, like we should go. Like he felt a little unsettled. So he was like, I feel like we should go. And I was like, oh, come on, just relax. You know, like don't be so mm -hmm. uptight sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And so he's like, okay, fine, we'll stay. And so it gets, because we live so far North, it gets dark pretty early here. And because of where they live, it's the road out of their house is very, has a very steep hill and it, it's icy most of the time this time of year. Hmm. And so that's, I think what he was thinking. He's like, okay, we've got the van. It doesn't have four wheel drive because we have all the kids with us and we've got the trailer that we're pulling. He's thinking, are we going to be able to get up the hill when it's dark oh. and cold and icy? That's why we should go and specifically say that. But I was just thinking, oh, relax, let's just hang out. Yeah. And so we ended up, we, we ended up staying. And then when we went to leave, I had this feeling like when we started to drive out of their lane, I'm like, hon, I don't think we're going to make it up the hill, but we had already kind of started up to, 
to go up the hill. Mm. And so what happened was we're like part way up the hill and the van, our van has the stupid like traction control where the tires lock when you're sliding and then you just can't do anything. So he's fully braking. Like he has the brakes on, but we just start sliding back down the hill and there's nothing we can do. And there's a big gully on the one side. Thankfully, as we slide back down the trailer, it just fully jackknifes like 90 degree angle gets caught in the trees and the van just like slams down on the trailer and stops, which means we didn't go, you know, nothing rolled into the ditch, which was good, but we get, he's like, oh, great. He's kind of, his instant response is like, I knew, I knew something was going to happen. Um, and he was, had this thread of like, oh, I'm kind of mad at myself for not listening to that feeling of we, we should just go. Right. And of course, then it starts snowing on top of the ice. The van is not going anywhere. All of this to say, when we get out, you know, the trailer has slammed in the side panel of our van. So now you've got extra expense there. And in the past, this is all coming to the point of growth. In the past, my husband would have flipped out. Like he just would have been so angry and he was so calm so after it all, we ended up calling friends actually that weren't too far away. They're, they're ranchers. They have a tractor. They pulled us out with the tractor. It all worked fine. But when we got, by the time we got home, we took a step back and I was like, wow, hon, I am so proud of you. You were so calm that entire time. I've never seen you react like that in a scenario where it happens quickly and it's going to cost money and it's a mistake. Yeah. All of those things. It's scary. Your family yeah. was in danger. Exactly. He would have been very angry with himself. And so the fact that he, he did have some of those underlying feelings, but we talked through it and we supported each other through the process. I was just like, wow, hon, this is so cool. Because typically if he gets angry at his, his self, he starts expressing anger towards all of us. And then I get angry back and then it ends up just being this big explosion, right? Which it wasn't. So I was like, wow, wow, what a cool growth point. So it just made me think about it. It seems like a little thing, right? But actually such a huge thing. It's such a huge thing. I love that. That's so cool and scary. And I'm glad everyone's okay. Did you say, yeah. what did you do? You Did you stay the night there or leave the van oh, no. there? What did you know, our, our friends who, uh, yeah, our rancher yeah. friends that aren't far from there ended up pulling, being able to pull us up the hill with their tractor, like with chains and stuff. <laughs> wow. And yeah, we live in ranch, skills. we live in rancher country. So thankfully lots of people have big, huge tractors with massive yeah. tires. Well, people, other Canadians have told me that Alberta is like the Texas of Canada. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I grew yeah. up in Texas. <laughs> so you get it. Yeah. So it's it's kind of like Alberta with no snow. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like that, but just way colder. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, Northern Texas has tons of ranches and tons of snow, but you okay. know, I grew up in the Southern part. That's so amazing. Oh, that's cool. That's so cool. Um, just because you are from a family of four and then you had four kids How do all of your siblings have four kids? <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't. My Random oldest, question. I know. Yeah. Curious. Okay. My oldest sister has three and mm -hmm. my my sister in between us has four and then we have four and then my younger brother has two, but their youngest is still pretty little. So I don't know. Hopefully they're having more because they make cute kids. <laughs> oh, it's so fun. So fun for all the cousins to have lots of cousins to play with. And it must yes. be so fun for your parents. They must love that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. We don't, because we live on the other side of the country, we don't see them as much as we'd like to, but um, but yeah, when we do get together, it's just like, pick back up where you left off. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Um, so you're building your practice with your husband. Now I want to talk about Frexy. I want you to tell <laughs> everything about what you're up to now. You're building your practice. You're a doctor. You have four, you get, you're having a family, you're adding to your family. When did you, when did this little idea pop into your brain about let's just start a clothing company? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that so funny, right? It's awesome. Well, yeah. Well, it's interesting. Like my husband and I have owned our clinic for seven years, almost coming on eight years now. And in the beginning, I I was the one who actually had to move across the country in order to buy this practice on time. He was still finishing his last year of school because he oh. graduated after me. And the timing was like, we're selling now. So you need to go sort of thing. Oh my gosh. And so I had just had our second baby. 
And it's interesting, right? Because the first one, I only took two weeks off and then I was back and to the internship. And then with the second one, I was planning on taking a maternity leave, but it turns out that this was just the timing was what it was. So I moved across the country, like a 45 hour drive away from my husband for 11 months for him to finish his internship and me to jump back into full time in order for us to get the clinic that we have now with a two and a half month old plus my three-year-old. And so that was an interesting year. And then not to kind of go down a huge rabbit trail, but, and then actually my dad ended up passing away like two weeks after I got out here. So that was kind of just a hard year. So coming through that, yeah, no, I mean, it's just life goes right. But it, it, it ended up being where I was in the clinic full time. And then when he moved out here after he finished school, we ended up tag teaming the clinic, like just splitting the shifts. And then we had more babies and each baby, he ended up being in the clinic more. And the more babies we have, the more I want to be home or have more flexibility to be with them. So me going back to the clinic full time was like, okay, I, I would love to be able to do something from home. Uh, that being said, it's tough when you've done a full professional degree, right? You've done a doctorate, you put so much into this one profession that back to the identity thing, it almost becomes part of your identity and people know you as a chiropractor. Mm -hmm. And so, and not to mention kind of laying a lot of the foundations in our current clinic, I felt a lot of ownership over it. And so for me to kind of give all of that to my husband was like, okay, I guess I'm passing this off to you. Right. But in the end, ended up being such a good thing because he is thriving with the staff that we have in our clinic. He's doing an amazing job at it. Mm. Uh, And then what it's done is it's given me more flexibility to work from home. Now that leads us to Frexy because I started out with my podcast, Fresh and Fired Up. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to start with some podcasting, getting on some social media, Figuring out like, okay, if I'm, if I'm wanting to do something more on online platforms, I need to learn these skills. So I started out there. I do, I actually at the time uh, had a couple business coaching clients as well that I would coach through their own clinic development. So, and I still actually have a couple that I help them grow their, their clinic. And so that's kind of still on the healthcare side of things. But as I started to get into the online world, I was like, okay, I'd love to, start a clothing company and where that came from. I've always loved, I don't know, everything like sequence and fashion and fun and creativity. And I think that comes from the gymnastic side of my brain, which is just like, okay, we're always in sparkly body suits and done up with your makeup and your hair and all that stuff. Right. Oh, the coolest, coolest outfits ever. Right. And so that with, when I was a gymnast and coaching, I used to do a lot of choreography um, the choreographing of the routines Mm. to music. And it's very artistic and creative chiropractic. I love from the standpoint of being with people and helping people, but the, the actual tasks involved with being a doctor are very repetitive and they're very like, you're filling out all these forms and you're doing all this paperwork and you do it the same way every time. And there's these codes you have to follow. And it was like, I started to hit this point where I was like, man, this is not lighting up the artistic creative side of my brain. And because fashion and clothing, I love just like the flair and the spice and the variety that it brings to life. I was like, man, I wonder if this is something I can do. I'd love to be able to create and be part of designing and developing clothing. So that's when I started researching that avenue. And I started out actually thinking I was going to get into jeans and kind of like Western style jeans. And that ended up not working out, which it's cool how the right things end up working out and and then other things don't. It ended up kind of all falling apart when I started that round. I was like, okay, this can't be right. So my alternative idea was to do jackets for fit women Uh, because as a professional, as a chiropractor and an athlete, and still I work out, right. I've always had broader shoulders than they make blazers and bombers and dress style jackets for women. By the time I get home from work, when I'm wearing a blazer all day, I'm like, get this thing off me because I'm like, my shoulders and my neck are tight and I just feel uncomfortable and I want to get in something comfortable. So I'm like, what if I made a jacket that was acceptable, kind of like an all day jacket. It's it's elevated enough that I could wear it to work as a chiropractor or, you know, you don't have to be a chiropractor. You could wear it to your professional environment, 
feel almost like you're wearing a hoodie, but you're not wearing a hoodie because it looks nicer and it has better details. But by the time I get home, I still want to keep this thing on. Like it just, I'm good. I can move my arms freely. I look good. I feel good. And that's, that's where it birthed. And so when was that? When was it? When you had so that, that first idea. Yeah, that was within like the summer of 2022. And then in o- October 17th, 2022, I called, I had done a bunch of research looking at, okay, can I develop this type of jacket? I just, I don't know. I love jackets. I just feel like they add to your outfit so much easily. Totally. And so, right. And so I ended up contacting this company in Calgary that does clothing design development. And I chose Calgary because it's in Alberta and then I can get to them easily to inspect and see what's going on. Although there's, there was tons of options. Like how do you pick? Right. I felt like this was the one I should go with. So I ended up having a discovery call with them is what they call it, which to see, is this actually a viable thing that we could move forward with? They loved the idea and were like, yeah, this sounds great. We can move forward with it, with it right away. Of course I had reservations because I was like, well, can I actually do this? Like having some of the self-doubt of like, this is a totally different industry. It's going to be a huge learning curve. I don't know what I'm doing. All of those thoughts. So it took me a couple months to process my thoughts. And then in January of 2023, I was like, I'm doing it. We're starting a company. And I was like, biggest goal for 2023, launch Frexy. And I want to have it launch before the year is out. So basically it was just like, go from there. Frickin' did it. We did it. Woo. So the official launch was Black Friday, November 24th, 2023. Did it within the year. There's still a ton more to do, but it started. So I'm very thankful for that. Incredible. And you're going to have more than jackets. Like you're starting, that's your first thing you're releasing is these awesome jackets. And if you're not watching, you know, you need to go find her on Instagram because you got to see these jackets. Um, They're awesome. They're super soft. They're beautiful. They are. Tell us more about the fabric. I want to, because you said it's very sustainable and I couldn't remember what you said. Yeah. So the fabric that I've started with for my first line of jackets, our classic fit jacket Mm -hmm. is called a lensing eco vero viscose. And so it's a, it's an environmentally friendly material because it uses 50% less water consumption, 50% less CO2 emissions. It's made from, uh, from like bamboo pulp fibers. So it's very, uh, technically it can biodegrade back into the environment. Like it's all natural, which is what makes it breathable and soft. It does make it all of the natural fiber, fiber fabrics end up being harder to care for in the way of, you know, it's more real and natural if you have to wash it on cold and hang dry it and all those things because it's the synthetic polyester materials that you can just toss in the dryer and dry them hot and nothing will change with them. So, I mean, you do need to take a little bit better care with them, but they end up being better for the environment, not toxic on your body, which is huge. Uh, And they just, they feel amazing and they look amazing. They're very luxury. So did you, have you been for a long time, very cognizant or careful about the fabrics that you buy and you wear for your family? Like, are you, cause this is something that I wasn't really that aware of. I didn't check, you know, to see what things were made of, you know, I wasn't really, I didn't, wasn't really aware of the plastics and the polyesters and the vinyls and how there's how much toxic, how toxic they are on yeah. you, you know, you like just actually wearing them is toxic. Did yeah. you, al- did you always know that? Did you? Well, it's interesting when I've, so since it's been about since 2018 that I really started to, to dive into buying things that have a higher grade of fabric. Uh, okay. because honestly, I just love the way they feel and it's called slow fashion. It's sustainable. So you get these items in your wardrobes that they're, they're classic, they fit well, they feel good. And they're going to last for many, many years. So it's not just grab it and trash it every three months, right? You're you've got, you buy this fast fashion, which is crappy materials. They wear out quickly. They pill and they, do, and then you just want to toss them out and buy new stuff. And it's just this revolving door and there's Oh, there's just so much of it. And, and to answer your question more directly, no, I don't have all sustainable fabrics in our house. And yes, I still buy 
cheap t-shirts from Walmart for my kids sometimes, right? Like it's very hard. It's the same with other household household products, right? Like your soaps and your detergents and all of that. We definitely lean towards wanting to have the stuff that's less toxic for our bodies because it's going to make us feel better. But I mean, the way our world is, unfortunately, makes it very difficult to do everything sustainable. Um, so we we definitely trend that way. But if you walk through our house, you'll you'll still see lots of materials that aren't mm -hmm. for now anyways, but we can still grow in that area. Yeah. And I'm, I was just curious because just for the fabric, not, you know, for like the household stuff, I switched everything over, uh, to, I remember it was probably when Brandon was a baby. So I'm going on 20 years of the, mm -hmm. of the knowledge of the toxic chemicals in wind that like, I don't buy wind, like and none of that yeah. stuff. Right. So all the yeah. fragrance, I have fragrance free, all that stuff. You know, my, my kids used to go out to their dads and, and Brandon would come home from their dad's house and be like, mom, can you buy Tide Pods? I'm like, absolutely not. Never in a million years. I might <laughs> never, I would never wash your clothes in Tide ever. <laughs> but I never, I didn't have the awareness and the knowledge of the fabrics themselves, you know, yeah. not even the sustainability because yes, it, it's cheap shit from China. I am so tired of all of the cheap shit from China in general, because it doesn't last. It's total crap. And, um, it, it's just, there's so many problems. It's so problematic, right? I am tired of that. So, but I didn't really know how toxic the fabric actually was. I didn't, I didn't know that until, you know, just a few years ago. So it was recently for me. So I was just curious. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's more recently for me. I've found it's interesting within this past year, my knowledge of the contents of fabrics, the types of fabrics, the length of the threads, like there is such an art to it. And I would say I've had like a rapid fire learning process within the past 10 months but I actually find it funny because when I started out being like, I have no idea what I'm talking about. It's amazing when you think of it like who, not how. It's not how I'm going to solve this problem. It's who am I going to learn it from? Who's going to help me through the process? So I have had a ton of who's because I'm not afraid to ask the questions that are like, well, what about this, about this fabric? And what about that? And what's this one going to do? And how's this one going to react? And, and so I think more than anything, that whole knowledge has, has rapidly developed within the past year for me. Hmm. That's fascinating. I can't even imagine how much you have learned in the last 12 months, you know, just be like, <laughs> you knew nothing about designing clothes. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting so you when I first, it. yeah. Right. And when I first sent in my design ideas to them, cause they physically end up doing the mock-ups and the final yeah. like specs and patterns, but you know, I'm typing out like, okay, two inch collar, two inch cuffs. I'm thinking this width, you know, and this size range, and I want it to taper this way. And so it's interesting. Like I typed out my design concept on a piece, you know, on Google docs and sent it to them. And then they just, they bring it to life in their, when they do up their sketches. And I'm like, wow. And they add some cool ideas. They're like, well, if we add a seam here and here, it'll look like that. If we leave the seams off, like you originally said, it'll look like this. And then, you know, they have like four different sketches and I'm like, oh, I think I like this one, this the best. Can you do this, this front, but then use the back of this sketch, combine those. Let's see how they look. What happens when you add color? Like, so again, it's back to that, like super creativity mind light up, uh, but then so also fun. being willing to have those discussions and work with people and learn from them. Yes. It's so fun. And so, okay, then you're going to, you were also had t-shirts. I didn't get to try your t-shirts, but I know oh, yeah. you had them, you know, when I went with you, but I, we didn't ever do a, um, I didn't, we didn't try those. Try it. Yes. Yes. The other girls did. So you're going to have t-shirts, right? Yes. Are those be soon? So the t-shirts, the t-shirts were kind of like a trial run. Mm -hmm. So we do have yeah, I'm not a hundred percent that I'll be fully producing the t-shirts that I had when I met with you. Oh yeah. Um, they need some tweaks. So we'll be tweaking t-shirts and those types of tops, you know, tank tops and stuff in the future. But right now my focus is I have the classic fit one-sided jacket, um, already done is our reversible jackets that are going to be coming out in March and they're phenomenal. They're, you're going to, people are going to love them. Yeah, so the reversible jacket's great because you have the two in one. And then the next lineup is blazers. So the different types of blazers. So you might end up doing, I'm hoping to end up doing a crop blazer, maybe a hipster length blazer, possibly diving into Dickies. So I've got lots of concepts in the works. 
But yes, our specialty is more the jackets and the blazers. And then as it evolves over time, I'm hoping to develop more of the different types of tops in there too. So I'm super excited about the blazers because I wear them um, quite frequently, not, not every day, but in the, when it gets cold, that's when I wear suits and I, they're always tight on my shoulders, but yeah. you don't want to get the next size up because then you look like a refrigerator. Yes. It's too big. It's not actually your size. So it doesn't actually fit you. So I'm, I'm like, I share your pain <laughs> and I yeah. love that you found a, you found something that you could improve on, or there is a need for and that a lot of us have broader shoulders. Yeah. Jackets are tight. And I hate that feeling. I hate that feeling. Yes. I just can't wait to rip it off. I, you know, I get in my car and I'm like, oh, I can't wait to put it in the back seat. Get this thing off me. Yeah. Yeah. It's similar. It's totally similar to when you've been wearing uncomfortable shoes all day. Yeah. And you're like, get these things off my feet. I wish yeah. I could live in bare feet. But it's just the same idea, right? When you're like, oh, you get a well fitting pair of shoes that, are also stylish. You're like, Oh, I love these. I could wear them all day. It's the same thing with your jacket, right? You're like, ah, it feels good on me. It looks good on me. I don't feel like I want to rip it off at the end of the day because it has the right fit. And so it's, it speaks a lot to, to how confident you feel. If your clothes fit well, you will be more confident. You're putting on a blazer that fits through your shoulders where you can move your arms and you're going to give a presentation I can almost guarantee you, you are going to present better because your energy levels are going to be higher. Your mental state is going to be cle more clear. And this kind of ties in some of my chiropractic background is when I see people come in who've worn really tight, constricting clothing, like even, even as much as a sports bra that's too tight all day, cutting through their traps they get so much tension through their upper shoulders. You've got a jacket that's restricting through your shoulders and neck it's tightening up your whole upper body and your neck muscles and now your brain's literally not going to function as well because your body is has higher cortisol because you know when you hold your shoulders up by your ears and they're all cramped you your body doesn't function as well and then your brain doesn't function as well so for me it's yes you want to look stylish. You want to feel good in what you're wearing. That's the fashion side. But even my chiropractic brain goes, well, your body is made to move. That's why Frexy, our Frexy tagline is made to move. You were made to move. Frexy is made to move with you rather than restrict your movements because really nobody should feel suffocated, you know, or restricted by being able to express themselves in a stylish way. I'm so glad you brought that up because I did not know the correlation between brain function and tight clothing, especially up here. And like that whole brain body chemistry type, I mean, just from a piece of clothing that I don't think most people would even think like, yeah. I, I see these people that do, they, they walk with the rucks and they walk with the weighted vests and stuff. I can't mm. even have that on for 60 seconds without a, a headache. Hey, doesn't yeah. matter how much. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. matter how it could be just five pounds or whatever, but yeah. it could be empty. As soon as I put this right here, headache instantly. Yeah. I just cannot wear those. I just, I will not. So yeah, of course, but you don't think when I put on sports bra, is this, is it too tight? Am, yeah. am I raising my cortisol levels? <clears throat> my mind yeah. just exploded. So that's something to really, to think about like, yeah. like physically and mentally our clothes yeah. are really important. Right. So like the chiropractor in me is like, sure, fine. Wear, tor wear tight clothes. You're going to need more adjustments. Come on in. We'll fix you up. <laughs> the, the, the other side of my brain is like, you know, if you just wear clothes that fit right, you're going to need to get adjusted less, which is the same thing for, you know, depending on the shape of your neck. If you wear really heavy necklaces that can cause the same sort of thing. Or if you do, you know, some people will always wear their hair in like a tight bun at the base of their skull uh -huh. that can even cause headaches because you've got pull and stress and strain right at your right at the base of your skull and your brain stems right behind there right so there's so mm -hmm. many nerves that can affect do you have headaches do you have migraines all of these things wow that's so cool um um i am so excited about everything that you're doing and you're so inspiring on so many levels because you've just pivoted and you you just you've you've 
figured out that I think the one thing that stands out to me listening to you is that you figured out that every everything's figure outable. I know that that's a that's Maria, <laughs> what's her name's book, but yeah, anything that you don't know, you can just learn. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter you what it just, is. Yeah, you can literally just learn anything. Anything. I yeah, like you have to. We live in an era, and this is where I'm like. You know, people use their phones and their computers for mind numbing things. Guess what? You can use it to literally learn anything. Anything. But I think the difference is, are you getting distracted? Are you disciplined enough to stay focused? Do you have a passion, a purpose, a goal, a vision that you can actually go, you know what? It, nothing started to come into fruition with Frexy until I was like, all right, we're doing it. And at some point you need to make a decision and be like, I have decided I, that's one of my lines. <laughs> one of my lines, once it, once the decision is made, I mean, yes, we pivot and shift on the little things, but if it's like a bigger, greater goal, I'm like, I have made a decision and nothing you can do or say will change my mind. <laughs> And then someone told me was like, wait until your kid uses that line back on you. Oh, they will. It's coming. <laughs> That's fine. I'll be ready. I'll, I'll, Google, I'll Google what to do in that scenario. They won't know. And it'll be wrong. It'll be the wrong answer. And no one knows. <laughs> oh, everybody's wrong. Everybody's winging it. As it turns out. Yeah. Everybody's winging it. Everybody's winging it. <laughs> it's true. Um, yeah. This so this has been so fun. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your super busy, awesome day. Um, how, please tell my listeners how they can find you. Yeah. So if you want to connect directly with me, you can find me on Instagram at Dr. Emily Marshall. That's my own handle. I also have Dr. Emily Marshall.com. But if you're looking for Frexy specifically, then you can find that FrexyFit.com. It's F R E X Y fit.com or on Instagram at Frexy fit. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm so excited to get my new jacket and to see everything that you're going to be doing in the next few years. It's going to be really fun. Yeah. I'm and, pumped uh, to see it on you. Well, I've seen yeah. it on you, but see it on yeah. you again. <laughs> I know the new one. I know the black one. I haven't tried the black one. That's the one I ordered. Oh yeah. That's exciting. Um, so fun. It's so exciting. Listeners and viewers, thank you so much for being here as well. God bless you. And just remember that you can create the life that you love. You can create the business that you love. You can create the body that you love. Just working on it one day at a time. Thank you. God bless you.